the imposing Crate Mark II. Known for its unconventional design, Combat Pro S, and Coffee Maker. Since the Fargoid War started, and especially since Fargoid Titans became vulnerable, the Crate Mark II has been the workhorse of AX frontline forces. The Crate Mark II is the basis of a renowned Titan killer build, but it is also a fantastic platform for missiles, gauss, shards, mod shards, and even mod plasmas. With the advent of Anti-Guardian Zone Resistance Engineering, this incredibly flexible ship has become even more ubiquitous. I am Commander Mekin, and this is Bug Smashers, where we review every ship in Elite Dangerous for their anti-Xeno combat potential in 2024. Joining me today are experienced crate enjoyers, Commander's Absence of Gravitas, Aranyonio Stormrage, and Shadow Drykana. The Crate Mark II is able to pack a significant punch with good weapon convergence whilst remaining very cold and moving very fast, all with a decent level of agility and excellent attacking capabilities. The Python Mark I shares some of those characteristics but is slower and less manoeuvrable. The Federal Gunship also shares some of those characteristics but is amongst slower ships in the game. The Chieftain is still the ultimate nimble 1 vs 1 AX dogfighter, but the Crate Mark II is the best multi-role heavy fighter bomber in the game. The downside of the Crate Mark II is a weak yaw so it's easier to roll and pitch to get on target. Its lateral thrusters are also weaker than the Alliance ships, so it needs to rely on boost to effectively orbit interceptors. It's harder to fly a Crate Mark II than it is to fly a Chieftain. Also, whilst the size of its hard points is great, its number of hard points and utilities is only average for a medium ship. The anti-Xeno Initiative and the Xeno Strike Force have performed a mind meld to develop a flexible common core for the AX Crate Mark II. This offers a set of core internals and optional internals which support the widest variety of builds with little or no change to the core. This common core enables builds which perform exceptionally well in multiple roles in Titan space, alert systems, spire sites and anti xeno combat zones, and even traditional solo combat. Let's start with the core internals. Please note that for this reference build all engineering is meant to be grade 5 unless otherwise noted. We do have a low investment build for you later. The common core runs lightweight armour with heavy duty engineering and the deep plate and experimental. Military grade armour can be used to trade some speed for some hull, but since this build already has over 2500 hull hit points, it's generally not worth the trade, and this would also increase the rebuy cost of the ship. The enhanced resistances of mirrored and reactive armour are mostly useless in AX combat and would also just increase your rebuy cost further. The power plant is low emissions with the monstered experimental. This enables the ship to run cold enough to operate undetected in Titan space, whilst also providing sufficient power to feed even the most power hungry weapons, and using as few selective module shutdowns as possible. If you have the materials to spend, a second plant with low emissions of thermal spread could also be used for stealth purposes in Titan space, but the difference is marginal and the material cost is high. An armoured plant would significantly increase your heat profile and get you in trouble in Titan space, but serves well in AXCZs and Spire operations. Drives a 6A with dirty tuning and drag drives experimental. The drives and the power plant are the two most important modules to engineer on this ship. The power distributor is 7A with charge enhanced and super conduits. Not weapon focused, which would limit the ship's ability to boost, which it depends on in many cases, and the time it can hold its shutdown field neutralizer, which it'll often need. The power distributor is the third most important module to engineer. Sensors are 6D with long range engineering. D rating is fine for range with the engineering and saves weight that's giving you speed and jump range. Life support is 4D with lightweight engineering. You can cheaply synthesize oxygen if you ever need longer than the six minutes this life support grants, which is plenty. The frame shift drive is a class five with SEO with increased range of mass manager as experimentals. We recommend A rating for jump range, but you could also go for D rated here, which trades a few light years of jump range for an additional 3 meters per second of velocity. Difference is marginal. The fuel tank is the standard 32 ton version. Optional modules for this ship are standard for an unshielded repair build. Class 5 D repair limpid controller with a 64 ton cargo rack to carry limpids, though you'll really need that many, and a Class 3A AFMU for module repairs. We recommend the standard three module set of reinforcement packages in Class D, and size is 5, 2 and 1, and we use a standard, not Guardian, version for power management reasons. The integrity difference is small. If you have the Guardian version and want to use it, and the power budget to do so, great. 
you're planning to go to Titan Space or Spire sites, make sure that you've engineered them for anti cardian zone resistance. The plan is for the largest one to take the damage and be repaired mid combat with your AFMU. So you only really need to use a GMRP in the class 5 slot anyway. The rest of the modules are filled out with D-rated human hull reinforcement packages of sizes 5, 4 and 3. These are engineered with heavy duty and deep plate and experimental. The class 3 HRP can be swapped out for an experimental weapon stabiliser if your hardpoint choice consists of 5 experimentals. The utilities you equip depend on where you'll be taking your ship. This will generally be some combination of heat sinks, course extinct launchers, a shutdown field neutralizer, or Thargoid pulse neutralizer, and for the multi cannon variant, an enhanced Xeno scanner for sub targeting purposes. Weapons are not recommended in the Common Core, these are role dependent, and we will discuss these later. Engineering for the Crate Mark II Common Core, and thus materials grind, is intensive. We appreciate that a lot of commanders will find that inaccessible. So we've also designed an entry level core, which requires three of the initially available engineers. Felicity Farcia for power plant drives and FSD, the Dweller for power distributor and beams, and Liz Ryder for armor and hull reinforcement packages. There's a different experimental on the power plant in the entry level core. You can only achieve a grade one low emissions plant with Felicity, which has higher output than its grade five counterpart. You can use a thermal spread experimental on it without incurring the limitations that would be placed on its higher engineered version. There's also a different experimental on the thrusters, as you will need thermal spread to remain below detectable heat in Titan space whilst under thrust. This version won't perform as well as the G5 version, but it should perform well enough for the build it supports. The variant which we believe may prove most popular in Titan space is the 2024 Titan Killer version 2.1S. It is armed with three large and one medium of the old Guardian shirt cannons, all of them engineered for anti-Guardian zone resistance at Ramtaw, along with a medium nanite torpedo pylon. This build is primarily designed as a Titan bomber, but it is more than capable to hold its own against weaker interceptors as well, such as the Cyclops. Given the high spread and low shot speed of old shards, however, it is less capable of dealing with hunters, scouts, and tougher interceptors, i.e. Medusa or Hydra. This build is capable of dishing out a terrifying amount of damage to the Titan thermal cores, with individual runs having repeatedly been clocked in at 69% damage per cycle, which means that just two of these in a wing are more than sufficient to zero out the Titan thermal core repeatedly and consistently. The shard bomber uses four fire groups. First, Torpedo and a heat sink on first trigger, scanners on your second trigger. This will be your vent bombing fire group. Second, shards and other heat sinks on first trigger, scanners on second trigger. This will be your core bombing fire group. Third, repair limpet on first trigger, scanners on second trigger. This will be used situationally to repair when needed. Fourth, Caustic Sink Launcher on first trigger, Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer on second trigger. You'll be using this fire group when crossing the Caustic Zone approaching the Titan, and situationally if you need to drop a full Caustic Sink. This variant flies 141 pips during vent bombing, and will switch to 033 during thermal core bombing. Moving to what is the natural evolution of the original Titan Killer build, Let's look at the version which uses missiles, and, specifically, the pre-engineered Sirius Anti-Xeno Missile Racks. Large Sirius Missile Racks have 10.7% greater damage per dive than their shirts counterpart. That difference is reversed to minus 20% for the medium variants. Net-net, it's fair to say that the damage per dive of the Shard variant and of the Sirius Missile variant is roughly comparable, with a 4.8% advantage in favor of missiles. Considering, however, that the Shard variant deals such damage over fewer cycles, and is generally better at handling other Titan space threats, it becomes really a matter of personal preference which one you run with. The beauty of the Common Core is that you can very easily swap weapons and try them both. This build uses the same fire groups as the previous Shard variant, just replace the missiles for the Shards. This variant also flies 141 pips during vent bombing, and will switch to 033 during thermal core bombing. Titan space is dangerous, and maybe you're bored of shooting at the so-called pineapple. Then why not hop into a proper fighter and use that to provide cover to fellow commanders on their bombing runs? The 2024 Titan Killer version 2.1G is the anti-Xeno multi-cannon variant of the lot. It is armed with three large and one medium gimbaled enhanced anti-Xeno multi-cannons. That's a mouthful. 
and one medium gimbal thermal vent beam laser. Note we're deliberately not using the azimuth pre-engineered variants here for our standard build. They run too hot for Titan space if not correctly managed and are not recommended for beginners or those new to Titan combat. For a breakdown on why we consider the azimuthies, as they're so called, a side grade, refer to the video linked on screen now. This build is the bane of scouts, absolutely shreds hunters, easily deals with weaker interceptors, and can even solo a Medusa with some effort. It is a great and very easy to use combat vessel, which is also among the least grind intensive of the variants out there. This variant uses three fire groups. One, all multi cannons on first trigger, Baven Enhanced Xenu Scanner on second trigger. This is your primary combat fire group. Make sure to get a detailed scan of fighting interceptors. Two, this group is going to be used for repairs just like previous builds. Three, Caustic Sync Launcher and Thargard Pulse Neutralizer, just like previous builds. This variant has the easiest pips configuration of all. It flies 033 all the time, except for when you situationally need to recharge your system capacitor with 420 after using your Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer. Fortress Interceptors have pretty tough shields, which you quickly need to batter down before they escape. What's the guarding weapon that burns the quickest through shields? That turns out to be large shard cannons, and they also happen to do a very reasonable amount of hull damage. Since large shard cannons can now be protected from an Orthos's annoying anti-guardian field, they make among the best anti orthos weapons out there. Properly used, modified plasma chargers still work better at spires, but the shards are just so much easier to use and a lot more carefree. Meanwhile, NPCs cannot be used at all on Titan Space. Enter our 2024 Oreo Snacker version 2.1S build, which is an all shards variant using a class 3 experimental weapon stabilizer to enable fitting that 5th medium shard. It is simply devastating even solo against Orthos Interceptors. With premium ammo, it can also instantly destroy Cyclops Interceptors, much like a Sharp Honda would. It is ideally suited for Orthos hunting at Spire sites, an alert system non-human signal source of threat level 4, and during the 24-hour meltdown phase of Dark Bay Titans. If needed, it can defend itself from scouts and hunters, but it needs to be in close to almost point-blank range to score reliable hits on such fast-moving targets. Be wary of Medusas and Hydras in this build, however, as fighting them with old shards is incredibly difficult. The fire groups on this build are incredibly simple. 1. All shards on one trigger, Thargard Pulse Neutralizer on second trigger. 2. Repairs on first trigger, and all caustic sinks on second trigger. That's it. This build uses the standard 141 pip configuration when kiting and 024 when engaging. If fighting at spires, you may also want to keep 420 handy to extend the duration of your Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer, which you will need very often, and recharge it once spent. In scenarios where they can be used, the lethality of mod shards is second to no other weapon in the game. The Crate Mark II makes an excellent platform for mod shards, and possibly the best platform overall. The hulking anaconda might be more often associated with them, but the speedy crate is just a much better fighter for it, even with fewer guns. Mod shards are, without a doubt, the go-to weapon for anti-xeno combat zones where repairs are available, such as planetary ports and space stations under attack. Here they excel at dealing with everything, scouts, interceptors, and hunters, while also having a very decent amount of ammo. Their only drawback is their vulnerability to the AGF that glaives deploy when they appear. Glaives should be killed as a matter of priority, else a trip to doctor repair becomes inevitable. Mod shards also excel in solo combat, where they easily outshine even the stable Gauss cannons on everything but, maybe, Hydra fights. And even against Hydras it's a close competition with the Gauss cannon. Because of their AGF vulnerability, mod shards are generally not employed against Orthruses and cannot be employed at all in Titan space. As mod shards run very hot, you want to stagger fire them, similarly to Gauss. Unlike Gauss, though, you won't alternate. You will fire sequentially the five shots of your first trigger before moving to the second trigger, and firing your other guns while your first pair of shards reloads. The fire groups of the mod shard crate mark II are as follows. 1. Two mod shards on the first trigger, and the other two on the second trigger. 2. Your beam laser on the first trigger, and all scanners on the second trigger. 3. 
repair limpet controller on the first trigger, and caustic sink launchers on your second trigger. Note that you'll want to bind a key to use your shutdown field neutralizer when doing anti-xeno combat zones. It is much safer to do so than to fiddle with fire grips when unexpected shutdown fields trigger. This build uses the standard 141 pip configuration when kiting and 024 when engaging. Modified Guardian Plasma Chargers, or MPCs for short, are a less common sight on the battlefield, but still one that many commanders swear by. They are excellent against scouts, murderous against hunters, and are possibly the best Orthrus hunting weapon in an organized group. Additionally, they make for very decent weapons against all interceptor variants. They are also exceptionally distributor-hungry weapons, which is why even with the Class 7 power distributor of the crate, we recommend a build that uses just three. Another great highlight of NPCs is their gigantic ammo capacity. No other Guardian weapon comes close in terms of damage potential before needing to rearm. They share the anti-Guardian field vulnerability of mod shards, which means that they also cannot be employed in Titan space. Unlike mod shards, however, they are not an uncommon sight at spire sites, where wings of more experienced commanders use them to very quickly dispatch Orthruses, before they even have a chance to fire their anti-Guardian fields. That said, MPCs are most commonly seen in AX conflict zones and in solo combat. The fire groups of the MPC Crate Mark II are as follows. All MPCs on the first trigger and your beams and scanners on the second one for the first fire group your repair limpet controller on the first trigger, and caustic sink launchers on the second trigger for the second fire group. Similarly to the mod shards version, make sure to bind the key for the shutdown field neutralizer. This build uses the standard 141 pip configuration when kiting and 024 when engaging. Gauss cannons are the staple weapon of anti xeno combat. Since their introduction, the Crate Mark II has been competing with the Alliance Chieftain for the title of Best Gauss Platform. While less maneuverable than the Chief, the hardpoints and larger power distributor of the Crate mean that most commanders will be mounting four medium Gauss cannons on this ship, which in turn means a significant bump up in damage in most scenarios versus its closest competitor. The final large hardpoint is generally reserved for a fixed beam, Although, if you're doing solo combat, and take care not to fly too far from the interceptor, the beam can be replaced with a flak cannon. Once you get those weapons trained on target, the crate can dish out some real punishment. In the top skilled hands, the skill ceiling of the Gauss Crate Mark II is generally agreed to be even higher than the Chief's. That is, for the best pilots, the Crate Mark II is the best solo fighter. Most beginners, however, would find the ease of flying of the Chieftain to be preferable to the extra damage and tank of the crate. This build is great for solo combat, can be used at AX conflict zones with repairs, and, while not ideal given its limited ammo, can also function as a Titan space fighter if desired. Though not for long, or at least not without materials expensive local ammo synthesis. This build is also ideal for space-based anti-xeno combat zones of the highest grades, high and very high, where glaives spawn and will wreck non-anti-guardian field protected weapons. The fire groups of the Gauss Crate Mark II are as follows. Two Gauss on the first trigger and the other two on the second one for the first fire group. Your beam laser or flak on the first trigger and all scanners on the second trigger for the second fire group your repair limpet controller on the first trigger, and caustic sink launchers on the second trigger for the third fire group. This build uses the standard 141 pip configuration when kiting and 024 when engaging. Building on the entry level core, we also have three modified builds intended for minimal grind. The first one is a Titan bomber which replaces the material expensive Sirius missile racks for the enhanced version, which can be bought for just credits at rescue megaships. The second is the very same Titan fighter of the G5 variant, simply with lower grade engineering. The weapons of this build can also be bought for just credits at rescue megaships. The third and final one is a Gauss version which foregoes the material intensive process of anti-guardian field resistance engineering to offer a build that will work very well in solo combat settings and which can also be used at anti-xeno combat zones that have repairs available. 
Note that all variants, dependent either on mod weapons or on anti-guardian field resistance engineering, have been excluded, as all such weapons require quite the grind to acquire or engineer. The Crate Mark II is the undisputed meta of the Fargoid War. We say that with confidence, having tested it in just about every scenario of the war has thrown at us. No other ship has its level of performance and flexibility. The common core redesign provides the ability to switch out weapons and participate in every aspect of a war. The entry-level core provides a way for new commanders or commanders with more limited playtime to still get involved and make meaningful contributions. If there is a single ship a commander approaching Antixino combat today should have, it is a Crate Mark II. Finally, if you enjoy this series, please remember to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell below as it really helps us notice your support and it encourages us to make more of these. Glory to Mankind, Commander Mechan over and out.